you are welcome to yet another episode of HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. There are just way too many issues with regard to the Chicago trial against R. Kelly which saw attorney Jennifer Bonjean pledge a fight back in form of an appeal. Among these being the charges that were brought to the table way ahead of their statute of limitations expiration with no regrets whatsoever. Court's refusal of her motion to sever counts of inducement where claims that were made did conflict, and the issued 240 months prison sentence which was way above the standard sentencing guidelines. In our previous video release we highlighted Bon Jean's first concern, and that was to do with the statutes of limitations that should have protected R. Kelly from being prosecuted for most of the counts ignored. And indeed the Department of Justice should have remembered the non-retroactivity principle of law and considered the already expired statutes of limitations, but because they were also blinded by the desire to lock up R. Kelly never to see the light of day again, they all got carried away and granted the demands of Sony and many more that hate R. Kelly. In this particular episode we speak on Bonjean's second concern, and that is the court's refusal to grant her motion to sever the inducement counts 10 to 13 from the CP counts related to principal witness Jane. This was a major act of prejudice as it denied R. Kelly the opportunity to defend himself against the inducement counts, for matters which were so weak as compared to the CP charges related to Jane for which the government attempted to present video evidence that may also be contested though with a completely different approach. Attorney Jennifer Bonjean believes that the government knew well they did not have any tangible evidence to support the claims of inducement related to Nia and other accusers, but they did have a videotape to support their claims related to principal witness Jane. In fear of losing the other three counts, which R. Kelly could have easily defended against, they decided to join them up with the CP charges such that a single guilty verdict would cause all counts to return as guilty. This is not to say that the CP charges were not contestable, but there was no way R. Kelly could have spoken on all combined and not risk self-incrimination which would amount to denying himself the relevant amendment right. The merger of these completely unrelated counts was a trap by government to prejudice the R&B King, and sadly the Department of Justice also followed along. This actually does explain why attorney Jennifer Bonjean advised her client to remain mute throughout this trial citing such traps that were placed in his path by the Canning government prosecutors, and unfortunately seconded by the court. It's even a little hard to imagine why such an amalgamation of counts that were completely unrelated, some with physical evidence presented and the others with completely no evidence would have existed in the first place. If this act of prejudice had not been made by the government, R. Kelly would have walked off guilty free for all these counts, considering he needed not defend against the CP charges whose physical evidence presented on tape had no established source to qualify it as admissible. Bonjean is therefore right to argue this out as an act of prejudice against her client that needs to be carefully reviewed by the appeal court. Meanwhile, the Chicago trial seems to be the champion when it comes to deliberate combination of unrelated counts to cause wins where they are not due. We saw the judge himself issue the worst possible advice to his team of jurors when one of them raised their hand and asked what to do with the enticement and coercion counts which were combined. According to the juror, the team had found that R. Kelly was not guilty of coercion but may have enticed the alleged victims, but because the counts were merged together as enticed and coerced, they needed legal advice on how to go about it. Federal Judge Leinenweber who was expected to declare a mistrial instead preferred that R. Kelly be determined guilty of both enticement and coercion, yet the court had clearly determined that he had not coerced anybody. In Bonjean's appeal, she states that where the jury saw the highly inflammatory video evidence related to Jane, they lost their drive to examine Nia and Pauline's testimony through the same lens they would have used if the videotape related to Jane had not been present. Without the bogus videotapes, the government would have been left with 25-year-old testimony from two women, one describing a single occasion of groping for which the accuser later sued defendant and received a $500,000 compensation yet she now returned for more extortion, and the other who for decades denied a prohibited sexual relationship with the R and B King yet she now claims this happened after the promise of restitutions came into play. Defendant technically had a strong defense against these two accusers Nia and Pauline, and was simply meant to remain quiet about Jane's tape evidence which only required the court's dismissal for inadmissibility. 
The emotions drawn from this televised evidence that lacked an established source however overshadowed R. Kelly's defenses for the other two complainants. Right from the beginning of this trial process, R. Kelly has been a victim of prejudice and we have time and again spoken about this. In the New York case for example, the selection of highly prejudicial jurors was the deal breaker as we were never going to take their judgment as fair when the very same people had confessed they were not far from this description. We will not discuss the presentation of multiple accusers with uncharged claims. The appeal court by culture is intolerant to prejudicial tendencies and will not hesitate to punish any such actions that may in a way lead to this. We have seen the appeal court dismiss and overturn convictions that may carry the word prejudice imprinted on them. There is definitely need to do the same with R. Kelly who has been highly prejudiced. Jennifer Bonjean is more than right to appeal this adamant refusal by court to sever such combinations of charges. According to Debbie Jackson, I have never seen the government do a single defendant filthy as they have done R. Kelly. The sad part is to note that the judiciary is helping. I pray that R. Kelly is released, and that those involved in this be brought to account. We have seen prejudice but this against R. Kelly is just so telling. One may wonder what the government together with the court of law has against a single citizen to imagine he deserves to be prejudiced, but a time is coming when all such malicious intent will be turned into leverage for R. Kelly. According to Joyce Sanders, I am one of those who don't think R. Kelly needs a retrial. What he deserves is an immediate acquittal and this is what attorney Jennifer Bonjean should be advocating for. It's true R. Kelly has been highly prejudiced. His neck is being leaned on as was done Gorge Floyd. The government wants to kill yet another innocent black man. R. Kelly should be acquitted as this is double jeopardy combined with the abuse of statutes of limitation. Imagine R. Kelly was found not guilty on the same case 20 years ago but it's been brought all back like it wasn't the same Department of Justice that acquitted him. Numerous pieces of evidence have also shown that his alleged victims were not necessarily underage like they want us to believe. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.